Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for choosing Across the Fence. I'm Will Michael in this afternoon for France Stoddard. It is time for our monthly Bird Notes program. We're going to talk today about some of the more unusual birds that are being seen this summer. Joining us from the Audubon Center in Huntington is bird expert and conservation biologist Mark Labar. Mark, always great to quote unquote see you. Uh, one of these days we'll get you back to the studio, but uh, always good to see you each month. I hope you're well. I am, and I look forward to sitting across the table from either you or Fran. So your field season is winding down, but uh, you and I were talking before we got started. There's definitely been some interesting birds in Vermont this summer. Yeah, things are starting to get a little bit quiet. There's still a lot of birds out in the woods, obviously, because there's a lot of young out there with the, the adults. And, you know, every year in Vermont, we can have surprises, you know, birds that, um, uh, you know, we might see irregularly or in the case of one bird over in Heinsberg, one that um, is, you know, rarely, rarely seen and uh, got people interested and it became a bird that, um, you know, we think is breeding here. So uh, what exactly does this mean, a new breeding bird in Vermont? In other words, is that somebody who's here who we haven't seen ever before? Yeah, so it's a bird that um, has showed up and uh, has been, you know, pretty closely documented breeding here in the state. And this particular bird is a bird called a dick sissel, uh, which tends to be more um, Midwestern in nature. And uh, it was seen over in Heinsberg. And of course, when you um, are trying to see whether a bird is breeding, a new bird is breeding in Vermont for the first time. The first thing you do is have to see it. And this is a dick sissel. Uh, fortunately, this is a bird that likes open fields, but it often perches on power lines. So birders got a really good look at it. Um, you know, the next clue that tells you it may be uh, breeding is to hear it sing, um, to hear the male sing. And so uh, people started seeing this bird. They started, you know, it was up there perched on that wire. It was singing away. Uh, but still, you can often have instances where there are a single bird, a single male that may sing his little heart out. But if there's not a partner, then, um, you know, that that bird is, you know, spending a lot of time for naught, so to speak. Mark, do you uh, want to take case, do you want to take a stab at what that song sounds like? Is that something you can share with us? I, I, it's a tough one for okay. me. Um, so I didn't I'm gonna mean pass to put you on, on the spot. I know how difficult yeah. th that that can be. So yeah, you, some you, of them some of them I can do, but some of them I can really uh, butcher as well. So I'm I'm gonna pass on that. Well, you've hit on the on two pieces so far, and the singing is one of the suggestions. You br you brought right. along a third picture, or actually. These, these pictures were provided by a viewer, I believe? Yeah, they were. And I, um, Jeanette Arnell is the one that took these pictures. Um, so thanks to her, we also got kind of the final confirmation um, or close enough. And this is a pair of dick sissels actually breeding on the wire. So, um, you know, birds uh, copulating is not something you necessarily often see, but this is a bird that um, you know, was right out there and that wire seemed to be the spot. Uh, and a little bit later, some other birders reported um, Dick Sissel's bringing uh, what looked like food back to potentially young uh, in a nest. Uh, so this is the first time this bird has been documented breeding in Vermont. And um, so really unique, whether it'll be back next year, we don't know. Uh, whether we'll see more of them, but um, I'm sure the birders will be back there next year to see if th this pair returns. Well, great work too by Janet. Thank you very much. Excellent pictures. A couple of questions that sort of begs, Mark. Um, how often does a new breeding species, how often does it occur, or show up? And how will we know, or will we know next, will it be a year before we know whether this, this species might have uh, made this home? Yeah, so, you know, it's pretty rare, you know, every, you know, once in a while, you know, things like turkey vultures when they first showed up and were confirmed breeding a couple of decades ago. So it's it's really not that often uh, that we'll see 
um, new birds that are breeding here. You know, there's lots of records of breeding birds that may have bred here, you know, every once in a while. But um, so this is a really kind of exciting first um, for the state. So uh, and and it's a and it's a good bird for folks out there looking for it. And I imagine, uh, given what you do professionally, this has got to be a pretty cool thing to have happen. Yeah, you know, it's 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 one of those things that as you know, you can never tell whether birds are just kind of expanding their ranges. Um, could very well be changes in climate that are moving birds around. Um, you know, over the next uh, couple of decades, we may see a lot of birds that are southern birds that are becoming new breeders or regular breeders here in the state. So, um, you know, we can't tell with this bird. And then to answer your other question, yeah, we'll have to wait until next year. Um, birders will go back, we'll go back to that same spot. And, um, you know, because this bird is a pretty visual bird and sits there on the wire and sings away, uh, we'll be able to document whether or not um, it's, uh, you know, thinking Vermont is someplace that, you know, wants to stay. So you, uh, this afternoon with us, you have another somewhat rare species seen in a couple of places around the area this year. What's yeah, that about? Yeah, and, and this is a little bit of a story and it's, a, it's kind of funny because I was out surveying for golden winged warblers and we were in a, a scrubby field down in West Haven. And, um, you know, we were with, Bert, with uh, ornithologists from the New York DEC and we're, you know, we're finding blue winged warblers and all of a sudden we see a bird in a tree and, um, you know, it looks like an Oriole until you put your binoculars on it and it is an Oriole, but this is an orchard Oriole, which is, you know, they're seen here in Vermont, but um, this is a good bird. And we were actually doing this uh, just east of West Haven in Whitehall, New York. So we were all pretty excited that, you know, here's an orchard Oriole and we all saw it and we all knew what it was. But then shortly after that, we hear this bird singing away and we're searching for it and we're searching for it and we're bouncing questions back and forth. Could it be this? Could it be that? Could it be a thrasher? And it turned out um, to be a yellow breasted chat. Now, this is a bird that, um, you know, we don't see here in Vermont all that often. Uh, it, uh, it is a bird that uh, has been sighted in, in a number of locations including over in West Haven. Um, and we literally, this is a bird that's extremely secretive. So we were within, it seemed like, you know, um, 10 feet and we could hear it singing, but we couldn't see it. Uh, we were able to record its song and verify that it was a chat that way. So even really, you know, birders that do this for a living can t sometimes get stumped. Um, when they're out in the field, but uh, that was that was a good bird for me this summer. Well, he or she certainly seemed to be belting one out there. I, I'm st um, I imagine that song was somewhat loud. Um, yeah, it, and it <laughs> it was just all we could all all the three of us could do was go. It's a song we're just not familiar with, and so we tried to narrow it down, and we thought it might be a chat, um, just because we couldn't see it and it was really close and they're very like secretive like i said so but it was nice to have the ability to record it and then get the song confirmation uh later on so um there are some other uncommon breeders that showed up in some larger numbers than we might expect what can you tell us about those yeah so this year unfortunately you know vermont and spots has been hit with um, you know, a moth infestation, which has, uh, you know, denuded trees of their leaves and really hit some forests hard. Uh, but there are two species of birds that really enjoy eating them. And these are the cuckoos. So here's a black-billed cuckoo. Uh, and this bird I can kind of do well. This one goes cuckoo, 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 as one should expect. But these birds are birds that feed primarily on, on moths and especially, you know, this particular moth, um, they're trying to come up with a new name for it um, that really hit Vermont. So this bird was heard 
And this is its cousin, the yellow-billed cuckoo. Uh, again, very much like the chat. You hear them, but you don't see them. Uh, even though these birds are pretty big and uh, they're really cool looking with their long tails, um, they're, they're tough to find. They hang in the shrubs, uh, but they really enjoy, you know, caterpillars of the moths. And because of that, people were seeing more of them around this summer. Well, our, our new best friends, that is for sure, uh, because there's certainly been plenty of moths and caterpillars. Mark, we have time for a viewer question. It's from a viewer named Mitten Jeffrey, who writes, he's just wondering if you're still seeing hummingbirds at your feeders, or have you other inquiries? Mine, he says, seem to have disappeared. I'm vigilant about keeping the feeders clean and I make my own uh, sugar water at a ratio of four to one. So he's wondering, Mark, uh, the, the hummingbirds seem to have disappeared. So he's doing everything right. Uh, and, um, you know, I still have hummingbirds that are visiting my feeders here uh, a little bit more frequently. I got a picture of uh, this male ruby-throated hummingbird sitting out in the rain, um, kind of guarding my feeder. But this is also the time of year where birds are starting to disperse and move around. So the birds that may have been breeding and using his feeder um, may have moved to a different location, uh, but it's still good to keep your feeders up because the migration season will be starting and as birds uh, move around and start moving through Vermont, uh, having that food source for them is, uh, is still important. So hopefully her, yeah. for him, it's only a, a little blip in time where um, his uh, feeders are unoccupied, but he can, should keep doing what he's doing and, and hopefully see more as we get closer to fall. Well, we want to thank Mr. Jeffrey and all our viewers who send in questions. We'll point out before we go that if you have a bird-related question, you can pass it along to Mark at the address that we're going to put on the screen. There it is. You can drop Mark an email. His address is mlabar at audubon.org. Send Mark your questions and your pictures, and he'll try to find the answers for all of us on an upcoming edition of Bird Notes. Mark, always great to see you. We'll see you back here again in another month. Thank you. All right. Sounds good, Will. Good chatting with you. Very good. That is our program for today. We want to thank you for joining us because we know you have choices and thanks for choosing us. I'm Will Michael inviting you to join us back here each weekday afternoon for another visit across the fence.